power. This power that he has given to the church. This power he has given to me. And you, by the way, Pentecost would occur ten days later on a Sunday. Pentecost this year is going to fall on the 30th. I got the right date this time. The 30th of May. Four weeks from today is Pentecost. Now, I've always had this kind of funny question in my mind. We decorate for Christmas. We decorate for Easter. How do you decorate for Pentecost? I have no idea. But I'll tell you what. Why don't you just let a life filled with the Holy Spirit testifying about Jesus Christ, sharing Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit every time you turn around, why don't you let that be the decoration? Amen? Let me share this passage with you. What happened on the day of Pentecost? Acts chapter 2, uh, verse 41. I believe I have to open it up here. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. 3,000. That's just men, not counting women and children. Now, it's estimated at this time in the church you had 500 members, but in one day, you added 3,000. The word Pentecost it's a word that refers to a harvest celebration. And so the Spirit testifies about Jesus and then empowers that testimony to produce a harvest. Number 10, the Spirit, and by the way, I'm getting out of John for these last two points because I cannot leave these out. The Spirit secures, everybody say secures, yeah. our salvation. You can't lose it. No one can take it from you. The Spirit secures our salvation. Ephesians chapter 1, 13 and 14. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the day of those who are God's possession, until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. In other words, till Jesus comes back to get us, the Holy Spirit is securing you. He, you he, he's a deposit. And let me just tell you what, Jesus is coming to claim what he has put a deposit on. How many of you in here own a house? Do you know what earnest money is? You sign a contract. When you sign a contract, you also shell out some earnest money, a deposit, guaranteeing that you're not going to renege on that contract. Now, when Jesus becomes your Lord and Savior, He says, here's the Holy Spirit. I have a contract. And I'm going to come back. And I'm going to claim what's mine. Amen. 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 And you think about it. Well, you do that in order that you might have a house. And ladies and gentlemen, when Jesus comes back, you will be His house. Amen? Amen. Heaven's great. But you know what makes it great is that Jesus is there and we're going to be there too. Amen. And then number 11. The Spirit sanctifies us. Now what does that word sanctify mean? It means a lot of things. One of the things it means is that we've been set aside for a special purpose. When something is sanctified, it's no longer ordinary. It's not even intended for what we would call ordinary. There's another word I'm looking for, but I can't think of it. Uh, vulgar, that's the word. Vulgar means common. You and I are no longer intended for vulgar use. Think of anything in your life that you would labor, that you would label vulgar. How about vulgar thoughts? Or vulgar 
language or vulgar actions or vulgar jokes. No, friend. No more vulgarity. You've been sanctified. You now serve a holy purpose before God. 2 Thessalonians 2.13 But we ought always to thank God for you, brothers loved by the Lord, because from the beginning God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. And then if you will all open your Bibles, and I'm going to close. You open your Bibles to 1 Peter 1, 1 through 5. This will be our doxology and also a statement of the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. Peter, 1 Peter 1, 1 through 5. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, in other words, one sent by Jesus, to God's elect, strangers of the world, scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, Kansas, McPherson, Galilee, and Canton. No, it's not there, but I put it there. Who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Now think about that. God knew. God knew. He chose you. Through, and through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, for obedience to Jesus Christ. In other words, you would respond to the gospel, you would obey Jesus, he would become your savior. But all this was done through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and sprinkling by his blood, grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never, never, never perish, spoil, or fade. Kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power. Think about that. <laughs> uh, you know, I can almost hear one of those Star Trek captains going, Shields! Shields up. Here you are, right here it is. Who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Which is another way of God saying, you ain't seen nothing yet. So just remember that. The Holy Spirit is God with us now. Not only with us, but in us. And he does all these things we've talked about and more. Because we barely scratched it. We haven't talked about gifts. We haven't talked about fruit. And by the way, if you want to know where I am on that, let me just simply say that I am not a cessationist. What's a cessationist? A cessationist says that certain gifts of the Holy Spirit are no longer valid or in effect. Well, show me. Yeah. Yeah. The power of God did not peter out when Peter petered out. Let's pray. The Father, as we get ready to continue to worship, Lord, we understand that the worship is not ending. The worship continues as we go out the door. And you inhabit the praises of your people. And your spirit, your spirit is made glad by those praises. You speak to our spirit. You encourage us. You strengthen us. You empower us. So Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, help us to confess of sin in our life. And then, Lord, fill us with yourself. And help us to live by the Spirit.
and walk by the Spirit. And all God's people say, Amen.